Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and I decided I was going to start protesting with a picket sign against banks way back in the early 1980s. I started in 1980 to picket the Bank of Canada every Thursday when they set the new interest rate. It was a weekly event. And then after that, I'd walk up to Parliament Hill and picket Parliament at the opening of the House of Commons question period every Thursday too. So for five years, I was a constant fixture protesting every banker, every politician, whoever came to town. And over those years, I've continued being able to protest. I've gone to all the major events, the battle in Seattle, I was in Birmingham, I was in Cologne, and anywhere there was a protest, I was there. But I learned that the organizers are connected with the bankers. The organizers shut out my message as best they could. And it was a constant battle, which I always reported at my blog, to try and get let's on the agenda of these supposedly anti-globalization protests. Well, I wasn't very successful. And over the years, bankster moles would get on there and talk about all the different symptoms they'd like to fight. Whatever de without ever dealing with the cause. Well, I considered myself a protest instructor and instead of a protest obstructor. And that's why I would go in a suit and all these kids would be there in their, you know, in their grubbies because they were going to tackle the fence and tear down the fence because they got no alternatives to offer. Here's my point. Yes, we all see this mountain of debt on top of the poor nations, like the Jubilee 2000 crowd, and they all wanted to go and help the 43 poorest nations and forgive some of their debt. And why only 43, I never knew. Funny question. But the point is, you're not going to catch me helping to dig them out of debt with the other people while there's a conveyor belt of interest dumping 50% or 40% new debt on top of the mountain all the time. Johnny Engineer is not going to spend time digging them out from out into the mountain. Johnny Engineer is going to go after the conveyor belt switch, which is why I can be in a suit and talk about my solution of turning off the interest and restricting the bank's computers to a pure service charge. So, with an alternative to offer, I'm a pretty unique kind of protester, which allows me to go as best and as oppressively as I can. I'm not going to be fighting with anybody, though I've been taken away by the police a few times. So, this is a letter I wrote about my protest instruction activities back in 19, in 2001, before going to the Quebec City uh, event with 32 of North America's leaders. This is the post I made back then. Protest instruction versus protest obstruction. A message I wrote April 17, 2001, titled UN Globalization Engineer Counter Protest in Quebec. The big Quebec meeting of the North American leaders were there. I am John C., the engineer Termel Guinness, record breaking great Canadian character who authored the United Nations Millennium Declaration to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time based currency. As the granddaddy of anti-poverty protesters, my homepage pictures my first arrest protesting the IMF World Bank in Toronto in 1982 when I was all alone. Those who have no alternative to offer protest to obstruct. What else have they to do but say, ouch, stop. The Millennium Declaration, Resolution C6, the Unilex Resolution, is the alternative to global debt slavery that I've protested to instruct for over the past 22 years. Six Argent, 30 now almost, six Argentinian provinces successfully tested the LEX alternative time-based currency system in the mid-1980s when they started paying all their provincial employees with provincial bonds, a different kind of interest-free bond currency. With an alternative, I have always protested to instruct and will continue to do so in Quebec City. I will be counter-protesting around the site of the world's leaders meeting in Quebec on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at high noon to urge the obstructionists to join us instructionists in keeping our Quebec City protest peaceful enough to instruct the assembled world leaders to our Unilex alternative to globalization slavery. As a protest instructor, I represent no threat to those I am protest instructing.
I don't want to make them mad. I want to convince them to switch to the better alternative. In the early 1980s, police security allowed me to join Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth's receiving line, wearing my white hard hat and an abolish interest rate sign. Her Majesty was reported mouthing the two words, abolish interest, in the news. Not one of today's protest obstructors would be allowed within a thousand meters of Her Majesty with a big stick in hand. And there is no way in the world they'd let me do that again today. But I was trusted within bopping distance of the Queen. In 1967, at Canada's centennial celebrations on Parliament Hill, she was right in front of me with my rifle in my hand. While it was unloaded, of course, she was inspecting me as a member of her Cameron Highlander Honor Guard that day. Security also trusted me within bopping distance of Ronald Reagan, within bopping distance of General Secretary Michael Gorbachev, too. I could have even bopped the Pope Mobile as John and Paul II blessed me going by. I have been trusted within bopping distance of four Canadian Prime Ministers, Trudeau, Clark, Mulroney, Chrétien, and assorted ministers, MPs, MPPs, and even Prince Charles and Diana. Get the picture? When you protest instruct, your big smile lets everybody know that you are no threat to the system operators, only to the system engineering. You can be civil as you suggest your alternative to the machinery drivers. With no alternative to offer, protest obstructors cannot act civil and end up getting punched out by the cops for simply making trouble, the Naomi Klein crowd. So now the fences are up in Quebec, the threatening nature of the protest obstructors whom the media choose to focus on has prevented even the non-threatening protest instructors like me from any meaningful participation. Kids in combat boots and gas masks make news, not a guy in a white heart offering an answer, in a white heart hat offering an answer. Having participated in most major anti-poverty actions in recent decades, such as the battle in Seattle in 99, in Washington, in Birmingham, Paris, Cologne, Philadelphia, New York, even Windsor and now Quebec, I have watched as organizing groups like, quote, 50 years is enough, unquote, censor all discussion of non-violent alternatives and steer their masses of demonstrators to violent means. It's bring your combat boots, gas masks, and first aid kits, but leave your alternatives at home. Sad to say, but the kids in the streets are being conned by the backroom organizers, the banks through moles, who have their own hidden agenda, which isn't finding a non-violent solution to global problems, like Unilets. So my Quebec counter-protest will be to instruct the protest obstructors that there's an alternative that makes it worth giving up the violence to invite them to protest, instruct the wonderful alternative to globalized debt slavery that a United Nations international and local employment trading system bank card account and checkbook could offer every citizen on earth by the ratification of Resolution C6 to governments in the Millennium Declaration. And if anyone wants the Guinness record-breaking Canadian, great Canadian gambler who offered the UN Millennium Declaration to restructure the global financial architecture as a guest speaker in English or in French, I'll be available for Sunday, Saturday, and Friday evenings, maybe even Thursday if I'm contacted in time. And I'll have my accordion. After all, my message is, let's party, not riot. So, is there anyone going to be near Davos or near Belem who would like to do some protest instruction to these major groups to see if we can't convince them to both endorse the same Unilets time-based currency resolution? If you have any chance and you can help, there's two weeks for us to do everything we can to try and change our world. And frankly, because we're only talking about upgrading the bank's malfunctioning software, it's as fast as switching the disks. This is the two weeks that could change the world. So let's hope that you have some input. I can only ask people to get out there, do some protest instruction, spread the word about these videos, because I'm going to be really pushing the movers in the world to get involved. So let's hope that these last two weeks of effort can end my 30-year abolish interest rates project successfully.